Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to go over a few tips and tricks I have for Acid Bright. So first off, if there is going to be a pattern that you need to essentially duplicate to make some kind of shape, then you can use a new brush tool in order to make creating the rest of that shape really simple. So, so if I do something over here, like I want to have a blue bar that kind of goes across, let's go ahead and draw the initial pixels. So. The idea is going to be that this goes all the way across the screen. So you can do this one by one by left clicking on your first pixel and then holding shift down. You create a line that goes across or you could use the line tool for that. But if you want to do all five of these colors at once, what you can use is M to go to the rectangular select tool, select the pixels that you're going to be duplicating and then do control B, which is going to create a new brush from the source. By default, it's going to be pattern aligned to source, which means that if you left clicked to draw with the brush and then hold shift down and go up, it would just keep repeating that pattern indefinitely, uh, which is gonna work fine for here because we just wanna go across. So I'm gonna left click on the first one and then hold shift to draw a line. But this time we're drawing all five of the pixels at once all the way across as far as we need it. And so this can really be a time saver if you have a duplicated pattern. Now you can also change it from pattern aligned to source to paintbrush. So if you wanna take the same pattern and draw it somewhere else, but you may wanna start it not at exactly five pixels below here to duplicate the same pattern, but maybe you wanna go uh, to a different spot and just have the pattern start wherever your cursor is. Then you use paintbrush mode instead, and then you can draw across like this again. If you want to change back to the normal pencil brush, you can just click up here and then go back to the circle pencil or the square pencil. You also notice that when you create these brushes that they will be saved here, so you can go back to them if you need it. So just click there and then select and paste it all the way across. Once again, to do those quick lines, just left click at your first pixel, hold shift down and drag them to wherever you want it to be. You can also use patterns with the line tool. So if I use line tool, I can just left click, hold and drag it all the way across. So another really handy trick is to recolor pixels to a different color. So by default, if you have no selection, it'll apply to everything on the layer across your document. So once again, you might want to hit M to go back to the rectangle marquee tool so that you can select a region with the colors you want to change like this. And then to pick a color, you hold Alt down to switch to eyedropper, left click on the color you want to change. I'm going to hit X to swap my foreground background color. So now I can change the foreground color to whatever I want it to become. I'll just click on another color from the palette over here. And the color replace tool is going to swap the foreground with the background color. So I'm going to hit X to switch back to the background color. And now Shift R to do the replace color tool. So you can see in the selection, that's going to replace every pixel that has this color with the new color. You can also find it in the edit menu going down to the replace color menu item, which is exactly the same thing. So I'll do shift R to replace that color. And uh, maybe this time I want to select the next color. And maybe this time I want to select the next shade of red before I select the blue. So I'll left click over here, hit X to make that the background color now. And then Alt for the eyedropper tool, left click on the blue, Shift R to replace the color, and just keep going down the colors until you have it completely replaced. So I'm gonna left click on the next shade of red, X to switch colors, Alt for eyedropper, left click on the color that we're replacing with the deeper red, and Shift R to replace. So in a few simple steps, you basically take all the colors in the shape and replace each one of them. Now, this is going to be a lot more useful if the colors are scattered out, like if you're doing dithering. So for instance, if I have a pattern that is a lot more like this, it would be a bit trickier to draw diagonal lines or to click on the individual pixels. So switching the colors here is going to be more useful. So I'll left click on the red, uh, M for marquee select tool to select this region. So I'm only replacing in this area. X to swap foreground and background, Alt left click to select the blue, replace it. And then uh, let's do that again. Deeper red, X to swap foreground and background, Alt for eyedropper, click here, Shift R to replace. So that's a lot quicker than individually recoloring these pixels. Okay, so next up the rectangular, so next up the rectangle and ellipse tools. Uh, these are actually more useful than they might initially sound in Acid Bright. So if you use the rectangle tool, V on the keyboard, and uh, V will also switch between filled and rectangle tool. So it's U on the keyboard, and if you hit U while you have one selected, it'll switch between filled 
and rectangle tool fill just means anything inside gets filled with the same color. So if you need to create something that, so if you need to set up some big, simple initial shapes, such as the face of a building, these can be pretty handy. Um, so for instance, with the non-filled rectangle tool, I can outline an object, let's say a wall with the border color, just dragging it like this. If I get you now to switch to the filled color, then now maybe I could give the shadows that might appear at the top of this frame if there's something covering it. So I will just fill this rectangle here, fill send the shadows, and then for the lighter color for the rest of this face, I'll just hit G to switch to paint bucket tool and left click inside of it. And it could be pretty good for door frames as well. So I'll hit U a couple times, make sure it's in the non-filled rectangle. And then I'll select this border color again with the eyedropper tool and just kind of create a rough frame for a door. So maybe you want your door to be a little bit curved, so I can take some of the pixels out of the edges just to give it a bit more of a rounder shape. But it's a pretty good way to get some initial shapes. And you can also use the ellipse tools. So this would be Shift U if you want to switch between those. And I'll make sure I'm in uh, ellipse tool normally with a thickness of one pixel. And maybe I want to get some rough window shapes or something. So I could just left click and drag out a initial window shape. And it's going to give you a perfect pixel art circle or oval every time. <clears throat> so you don't need to worry about the exact placement of the pixels because it pretty much does that for you. And then you can figure out how to do the rest of that. Another way that you can quickly get circular shapes would be to go back to the pencil tool and increase the brush size here. So I'm going to hold control and scroll with middle mouse to make this about eight pixels and uh, making sure that it's in the circular pencil shape. And now I'll just go to a new document here and I'll just left click wherever we need a circular shape. So I think this could be a pretty good way of making car wheels. And if you need a bigger one, you could just increase the pixel size then left click and left click over here and then just fill in the details and the outline as you need. So if you are going to try to be making tiles for a tile set, you are probably going to want to use the grid mode. So to see the grid, you can go up to view show grid. I believe this always defaults to 16 by 16 pixels. So if I go to view grid, grid settings, you can change the size here, 16 by 16, a pretty common uh, pixel art tile size. So now if I want to create some tiles, I can just hit M for rectangular marquee, double select inside of one of these grid spaces, which will select everything inside of there. And I could start by uh, color filling it. So G for paint bucket, drop it in there. Maybe over here I have a lighter color grass, G bucket fill in there. Over here, I'll add a dirt color. And then in some of the adjacent areas, I could fill in a variation tile. So, uh, let's, so let's create another green tile, just paint bucket fill there and maybe I add some details. So I'm going to, first off, make sure this is one pixels for the details. And then I could add in some grass, something like that. Or maybe I create a grass that has a flower tile. So it could be something like this. So what's great about using the grid as a guide is that when you actually go to start building out a tile map, that you know when you separate it into 16 by 16 pixels, is that you know that when you split your image up into 16 by 16 pixel tiles, is that everything is going to be copy and pasteable by selecting the tile in whatever program you're using, whether that's Tiled or maybe Unity Engine, and you can just kind of stamp that around wherever you need a copy of this tile. So one of the other features that's really handy in Assetrite is to take your current document and to automatically tile it in both directions. So normally you would do this with one single tile. So I'm going to go to File, New, and just open up a new 16 by 16 pixel sprite. Then I'm going to copy from this one. Let's select this tile, Control-C, and then in the new sprite, paste it in. Go to View, Tiled Mode, Tiled in both axes. And then you can see if you were to keep using this tile over and over again, how it would look like if you were basically copy and pasting it by tiling it across your game level. So I'm also going to go to view show grid here. And when you have this set up, it's a lot more handy for seeing exactly how your tile is going to work if it would be a good tileable piece. So I might work at the corners like this to make it a little less obvious where one tile begins and the other one ends. And when you start to work at it where it's copying for you, you can see uh, where things are too cluttered 
where it's obvious that the tile ended and where the new one starts. So you can just kind of make adjustments to that as you need until you have a good working tile. And you can always see the end result before you actually use it in some other program. So you can find out where things are too cluttered and where they look good. So with a little bit of time, it'll start to look a lot better. Okay, uh, another tool I want to show is the effects outline, which is an edit effects outline, but usually I'll just use the shift O hotkey to make that quick. So I'm just going to come in here really quickly and draw something like a bed frame. And if I want to outline it, I could spend maybe 10 seconds drawing all the way around it with a black or dark gray outline, or I could just select the color I want to use for the outline and then hit shift O. So if you do this and you have other stuff in the document, it's going to try to outline everything. Right now it's working fine because there's only one object. But if you want to make sure it's only outlining the pixels that are inside of a region you want, you can just use the rectangular marquee tool, drag a region. Now it's only going to be outlining pixels in this selected area on this layer of our canvas. So shift O and we can outline it with the color we want. You can also change the outline color here if you want to see what different colors would look like. So you can select one that makes sense for the shape you're working on. So maybe here, I'll just go with the dark brown, hit OK, and we have a instantly outlined object. You can also outline it again with Shift O if you need to add two layers of an outline, uh, maybe one with a lighter color and one with a darker color. And you can see that uh, circle outside is the default. There's also other outline shapes, as you can see as well, and you can outline the inside rather than going outside if you want. I guess also changing to insight and then selecting a different color would be uh, one way of replacing the outline on one go, or you could just do a replace color that would work as well. But the outline tool is really handy as a time saver. So another trick I want to show if you're trying to build out a tile set like I am right now, uh, if you export from Asaprite to a PNG, you can load that up into other programs like Tile to build out a test level, see how your tiles actually work. So I'll go ahead and open Tiled, which is a free program. You can see here that um, since my last export, uh, the number of tiles has changed. So I'll just go ahead and hit yes to that. And here you can see I have tile sets loaded up from my Asaprite images. And then I'm building out like a random test map inside of Tile. So just like in Unity Editor or the Godot Engine, if you were trying to build out a tile map, you could do that in Tiled as well. Um, I kind of find that Tiled is a little bit more straightforward to use. So it might actually be worth purely building your game levels in um, Tiled and exporting those to other engines. So I can, but I can select these four tiles, which is supposed to loop. Let's use a rectangular fill tool. I'll just drag a region where I want that tile. Okay, so all good. So all good right there, right? We're just we're just duplicating the tiles on our tile map. I can save it here. But back in Asaprite, let's say that I wanted to make a change to it. So if I was taking these tiles and trying to make them darker, uh, let's select this color right here. And then I will hit X, change this to, let's say, a dark vivid purple, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, X to change back to the foreground color, which I'm going to replace with the background color. M for rectangular marquee, drag this region, and then uh, Shift R to replace the color. Okay, so I hit OK here. Control S to save. Control Alt Shift S to export the image. So exporting to the same location that uh, the tiled editor is actually using and referencing. So I export it here. And now with this change made, I go over to Tiled, and you can see that the tile set is now immediately updated with the new image. Uh, since in Tiled, it's referencing the external image for these tile sets. So one change and one export in Asaprite means that you can already update your test maps, or maybe these are maps you're actually going to be using for your games or other purposes. So I just find that building your tiles out in Asaprite and then testing in another program like this makes a lot of sense. It's a quick workflow for making changes. So I'll go ahead and Control Z to undo that in Asaprite and let's export it. Control Alt Shift S, export. Uh, that's the same as going to file export, by the way. And now uh, it's fixed once again inside of Tiled. This works, of course, because in the tile set, we are referencing an external image, which is the default inside of Tiled as well. So if we go to File, New, New Tile Set, you can see based on Tile Set Image is what you want. You select the source, but you don't embed it in the map because you're going to keep changing it 
uh, with that exported acid freight image. And uh, keep in mind the tile width and tile height. So for these tiles, I would want 16 by 16, but uh, that can change. Not all tile sets have to be 16 by 16. So that's pretty much what I've got so far for the useful tips and tricks inside of Asaprite that I've come across. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.